It's a brand new day. Hey. Wake up every morning and say it's a brand new day. Hey. Take a good day, make it great, okay? Cause if you got some lemons, make some lemonade. Yeah, taste so good. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Garden Diaries. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you so much for coming along this journey with Megan and I. We just appreciate all the love and support we've gotten so far. We've heard from a lot of y'all that you're really enjoying the podcast and all glory to go to God. Um, we're thankful for the opportunity just to be able to share. So if you haven't already, go ahead and follow us on social media and wherever you get your podcasts from. Megan. <laughs> Mike says I make a really weird face when I do that. Um, <laughs> you make a lot of weird faces. <laughs> I really do. Um, we do not have a special guest today. <laughs> nope. Who do we have? We or y'all are stuck with us. <laughs> Just us. Um, we thought it would be cool to start a little mini series in between um, recording with women mm -hmm. just on things that maybe we're struggling with right now. Mm -hmm. um, because I think we can both attest that we're both in, in the chaos of life yep, struggling. For sure. So Megan thought it would be can't take the credit because it was Megan's idea. Megan thought it would be a really great idea if we kind of just shared our hearts and a little bit about God is putting on our hearts in this moment. Um, and that way you can just understand that we're, even though we're doing this podcast and God has really been using this for good, like doesn't mean that the devil isn't attacking mm -hmm. it and it doesn't mean that we're not struggling. Right. So. Because I'm definitely on a struggle bus right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, life is a little chaotic right now. Um, but I do have some questions prepared yes, for we you. Yes, we still will do those. I don't even know where my camera is. I'm going to do it. It's above my <laughs> I'm just shoulder. Like, going, <laughs> like, I don't know which one to look The Wizard of Oz has moved the cameras because um, he thought we were done recording. But little did he know we had more in store for him today. Um, so if somebody was to write an autobiography or biography, not autobiography, a biography I'd of you. I'd write that. Um, Oh, that's what that means. <laughs> autobiography, you write it yourself. What would the title of it be? <laughs> you know, I don't know if this is appropriate. <laughs> you know, from Jurassic Park. Where the guy, of course it's Jurassic Park. Where the guy's like, the, the, all the, it, like, the lights and power has just gone off and he's sitting there. At the computer, he's like, hold on to your butts. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> That's your autobiography or your biography title. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> That's oh. like literally the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> uh, you just buckle up, buttercup. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, that is Sorry. <laughs> I too that I just went to that scene in that movie. Oh, that I say that a lot though. Like Hold to on Zach, to your butts. <laughs> how many butts do you have? Because last time I checked, I had one. <laughs> I got some butt cheeks, <laughs> but I don't have two butts. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's it. <laughs> Hold your horses. Okay, I've heard that one. That's not as fun. <laughs> Hey, babe, hold on to your butts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you just wait. One day, <laughs> you'll see it on the shelves. <laughs> You're like, that looks like an interesting book. <laughs> that person probably lived an interesting life. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> uh, what's the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Mm. Um... It's not weird here in the South, but gator. What? Gator. Oh, gator. I thought you said but gator. <laughs> Potato. <laughs> I, I, no, it, it's not weird here. Yeah. It's, did you like it? I mean, it tasted like chicken, but I wouldn't it eat it again. It's very chewy chicken. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think if there's, like, anything else weird I ever made. So, like, in California, they sell a lot of, like, questionable stuff in the ice cream machine. Like, in mm. the ice not the ice cream machine. The ice cream truck doesn't just sell ice cream. What else do they sell? Like Mexican candy and uh, um, different types of things. So there's this thing called Lucas, and it's really good. It's like this, um, like, peppery salt. Mike, help me out here. What it, like, consistency of, like, it's like a, it is, it's like a seasoning. And you put it on everything, and they have, like, different flavored Lucas. Like, you can get hot, you can get sweet, you can get lime, you can get chili. 
Um, but I used to put that on my ice cream when mm. I was little. I would say, give me my Lucas and my ice cream, and I put the Lucas on my ice cream, but then you also put the Lucas on your hand and you lick it. Interesting. I guess that's weird. It is weird. Definitely. Okay. That's weird food. Okay. <clears throat> um, do you have any time? <laughs> what? Are we going to be able to make it through the questions? Any type of, like, secret collection? <laughs> secret collection? Or, like, a collection? <laughs> I don't have a secret collection. <laughs> do you collect something? I do collect something. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous to find out what it is. It's, it's nothing crazy. Okay. Um, I collect campfire mugs. Everywhere Zach and I travel to, we always get a campfire mug where okay. we go to. So it's not weird. That's a good one. I was really wondering what you were thinking I was going to say. <laughs> Pokemon fight. <laughs> I don't do Pokemon. <laughs> I have beanie babies. I have lots of beanie babies. Have you still. seen if there was like any that are worth a lot of money? Yeah, I got, I got some of them, but I don't know where they're at in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. But I got lots of them. You never like, know. You might, this with this economy, you might need to find them. <laughs> I might need to. I have like the Princess Diana one, oh. and like the yeah, we we have them, and they have like the little security thing on mm -hmm. the tags, and they're preserved. Um, yeah. Hmm. I'm I really thinking. thought you were gonna say like Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> or something. I, I'm now I'm questioning how you view me. <laughs> I don't. Uh, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Zach does collect baseball cards. I see but that's, that. But that's like. That's normal. Yeah. That's a normal collection. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a secret either. If your life was a hashtag, <laughs> what would it be? Hashtag hot mess, mess express. Oh, that was easy. You um, already figured that one out. A hundred percent. Like. Woo woo. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Um, what was the first CD you ever owned? Oh, um, they were technically, I guess my sisters owned them because that they would look at like their CD players first because <laughs> they're older. Um, and it was in sync and backstreet boys. Yeah. And yeah, but then my mother took them away later on in life. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> were you not allowed to listen to no. backstreet boys? <laughs> no. Oh, that's very sad. No. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> if you could be any supernatural creature, what would you be? Can you define supernatural creature? Like, not something you'd run into every day. Like, something from, like, fantasy. So, like, Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? I I'm, knew it. I'm thinking, like... <clears throat> like a unicorn? Like Shrek. <laughs> Me? Do you see me as Shrek? No. <laughs> Listen, mm. I think we need to work on our friendship. <laughs> maybe, maybe like the gingerbread guy from Shrek. Oh, well, I meant like he was an ogre. Like that's a supernatural <laughs> creature. <laughs> Not like a gingerbread. <laughs> like like an ogre. A um. What about a narwhal? What's Those a narwhal? <laughs> It's a mythical creature. It's like a, I don't know. Is that the, the whales with yes, the horn? Yes. Like the unicorn whales? Yes. Or whatever. Yes, I want to be a narwhal. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with that. <laughs> that is my last question. Thank the Lord. I'm still over here questioning that you thought I would have Pokemon or cards. <laughs> I don't know about Pokemon cards, mm -hmm. but I thought you were going to have something... I feel like what you have is pretty normal, like mugs. People collect mugs. Yeah. I don't know. You're going to give me some off-the-wall response. I collect mountain dust from all the hikes I've ever been on or something from the mountain. I don't know. That's actually not a bad idea. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, people collect sand from, like, all the beaches they go to. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's normal. Um, I guess... <laughs> I guess I do pretty abnormal things, so I guess me calling people those things not normal is not, yeah. Okay. Anyways, so why are we here today? <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, Megan. Um, so I think it's just, um, like you had mentioned in the beginning, just important for us to um, 
ourselves be vulnerable because we ask people on here to be vulnerable and share their stories. And um, it's easy to look at somebody who's in like leading a ministry or doing ministry as a person who has it all together when I, in fact, do not have it all together. And, you know, and even in like the current things I'm going through, it's it's a testing of my faith. And <clears throat> God is definitely like drawing me closer to him through all of it. But I think it's important for us to be to show that we still struggle and but like what we're doing in the struggle and what God is teaching us in the struggle. Yeah, that's good. I think a lot of times we talk about this a lot, but like you see a snapshot of social media Mm -hmm. and you think somebody has their lives all put together and they show like the most buttoned up, beautiful picture. Um, And that's not reality. Right. Like I struggle every single day with anxiety. I struggle every single day with being overwhelmed and at my limits, at my breaking point. I struggle being a mom, struggle being a good wife. I struggle being a good Christian. I struggle (coughs) reading my word. And I think (coughs) a lot of times, to your point, we don't get to talk about that. Like, I think knowing that you and I are just two, I can say this because I know you, but broken Mm -hmm. women Mm -hmm. that love the Lord, (coughs) that the Lord has called to share other women's stories doesn't mean that we're free from our own right. struggles as well <laughs> as Satan coming after every part of this podcast trying to make it not happen, mm-hmm. which I think we've we've felt in the last couple weeks. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, to go off of that, I think um, Satan knows where we all struggle and know our weaknesses and um, can sometimes try and put that in emphasis in our mind. Um, and we focus on that, like I, and then which leads to I'm a failure. Um, this is obviously doesn't need to happen because all these things falling apart in the, but that's like, <laughs> unfortunately that's always going to happen because when, when Satan sees God using something for good, he's going to want to destroy it. Yeah. And, um, but thankfully our God is stronger and bigger, bigger and, um, <clears throat> bring it on devil. <laughs> you ain't going to come at us. I, um, <clears throat> I had something I wanted to share real quick and I know you did too, but one of the things I was like really trying to, I've been struggling with like being very overwhelmed mm-hmm. with a lot of things. And you and I have <coughs> gone back and forth about this. I'm really bad about asking for help. Um, when I need help and that's just because in my life, I never felt like I could ask for help and I don't feel like I have anyone that I can really rely on except for the Lord Mm -hmm. and Mike, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe one friend, right? Um, and so I've been trying to take your advice on being better about like allowing you to help and be a bigger part of like my struggles. And this is what I wrote. Um, I was reading something and I kind of rewrote what this this said and I wanted to read it. But we live in a world that's constantly telling us to to do better, be better and accomplish more. The impossible standards of beauty and perfection that we're told we have to have. If we look around, we start to think that in order to measure up, we have to have nicer things, fitter bodies or more well behaved children. We may start to believe that we should be able to do more than we currently are doing or that we need to increase our capacity to do X, Y, and Z. The truth is that we can do nothing of eternal value apart from Christ. Mm. Our Lord declares in John 15, 4, when he tells his disciples, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, I in him, he is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So I was thinking about, like, when we try to do things in our own strength, we will constantly be limited. Mm -hmm. We bump up against our weaknesses again and again. And actually, that's a good thing, filling our own limitations. But here's the positive news. God has no limitations. Mm, That's good. And I've been really reflecting on that. You and I had, like, a really honest conversation the other day, and I've really been, like, innerly looking at myself on, like, how I can do better about expressing how I feel when I'm struggling, when I'm feeling overwhelmed. And, like, I've been asking the Lord to really help me 
understand like what I need to do to work on that. And um, he led me to that. And I was just really thinking about like, I do have limitations, Mm -hmm. even though we want to think that we don't have (coughs) limitations and like, Hey, we compare all the time, like to other people that have it all together and they're doing all the things. And I'm like, why, why can't I do that? You Mm -hmm. know? And the Lord doesn't have that for me. And like, he's teaching me that, um, it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not do all things. Um, we're not called to do all things and we can't do all things. And the only way to abide in him is by trusting in him Mm -hmm. and to give it all to him. So (laughs) that's kind of what I've been. I, it's, it's funny that like talking about this, um, a lot of like what I said to you is because I was more, I was not just saying it to you. I was also telling it to myself (laughs) (laughs) because it's like, I know I also, and I have also struggled asking for help because I never want to be a burden to somebody. Mm. Um, but Jesus doesn't look at me as a burden Mm. when I go to him for help. He wants me to lay it at his feet, you know? And, and as friends and, and, in different aspects of your life, we're supposed to bear each other's burdens and, um, and help carry the load because the load is heavy. And like, while the Lord, like he, he will, he obviously carries our burdens. Um, but he does give us people to, to come alongside and help. And, and that is, that's, it's very hard for me. It, and I, for me, it's, it's always been a pride issue because I'm like, I can do it. I don't want people to think I'm weak. So I'm, and I, and I also have, <clears throat> always feared like being an inconvenience to somebody and I never want like I like that's just and a lot of times it's because I'm in my head and that person is always saying like oh I would like that's fine like I can help like I'm here to help and it's a lot of times it's just like I again I think it's like Satan just being like "Mm, no and um and it's in those times where I'm like I am trying to rely on myself to do all this stuff and I shouldn't be and God does provide the strength if I trust in him. And um, I also have noticed that whenever I am trying to, to to bear everything, to carry everything, to do all the things, um, not saying no to people um, or no to things, um, I notice that's when my anxiety is through the roof. And it's because I'm trying to do all these things when sometimes, like, God wants us to rest. Mm-hmm. And, and that not necessarily that means sleeping. It means, like, you need to, to slow down mm-hmm. and um, you, you, you're you making yourself so busy that you don't even know what you're doing anymore. Like you, you've lost the whole like purpose of what you're doing. And I know whenever I am anxious and trying to do everything and then somebody tries to come to me for advice or even like in small group on Wednesdays, <clears throat> I start speaking from my personal opinion rather than scripture, because I've been so busy that I actually haven't been in scripture. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, well, this is my personal experience. And that's where I I even had a conversation with Bree. Like I'm really trying to make sure that my, I'm not giving my opinions on things. Like it's, it's, I'm, my advice is based off scripture, you know, and that's, it's, it's easy like to, um, in our previous episode, like we were talking about quick to hear, slow to speak. Did I say that right? Yes. Yes. I said it wrong. <laughs> we always mess it up. But but it's um I I am more of a processor now because I'm trying to slow down mm. um and think through things rather than um because especially when you have ten thousand things like and I have a hard time sometimes compartmentalizing everything, like uh, okay, this is what I'm focusing on now, not all these letting all these other little busy things get in my head. Um and I think um The other thing that is important to do as well is when we are so burdened and um, we have a lot on our plate is the Lord, like he says in 1 Peter 5, 7, he wants us to cast all our cares, all our worries, all our anxieties, all our concerns, all of them. Not just like this, (laughs) this, and this. No, every single one, every single thought, even the tiny little things, you know, like God wants us to cast on him because he cares about us. Mm. And I think that's when we do that for our friends too, we're, um, and being that friend, like we're allowing them to, um, to share their heart. And so community is so important and, um, having like, obviously, you know, Jesus is the friend of all friends, you know, and he's closer than a brother and he, 
as a father, like, but he also provides us with people who can be a sounding board because sometimes like I just need to let it out. And then I hear myself. I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I really need to like ha- having just somebody to listen to, mm-hmm. you know? And then, and then when you like, a lot of times when I vocalize things, I'm like, mm. or I write it out. I'm better at writing out things than I am, as you know, with my novel length texts, <laughs> I'm better at verb, like writing things down because that's just how I easy my thoughts get come, come to life more than they don't really come out of my mouth that great. <laughs> so, um, but I think it's important to when in the busy to slow down. And um, we can be a lot of times as when, well, really people more reactive, like something happens and, oh, I got to react. Um, but sometimes it's like, actually, we need to rest and we need to slow down and actually reflect on what's happening before we respond, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I was going to say, um, you talked about busyness. And I think sometimes like, <clears throat> like you're doing all the things like some, I'm, I'm in ministry My husband's a pastor, running a podcast with you, trying to reach women, running a a women's group at church, running a life group, trying to be a mom. Like, busy's good, Mm -hmm. but sometimes I feel like Satan uses the good busyness to Mm -hmm. distract us and to your point to forget that, like, why are we even doing this? Mm -hmm. And he uses it against it. Um, And I think also, like, if if we're going to talk about busyness, I think we also need to talk about boundaries, too, Mm -hmm. like, and setting healthy boundaries. Um. You know, I always used to think boundaries was like a dirty word. Like, ooh. I think a lot of people do. But like, it's biblical. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, setting boundaries is, it's not only good for you, but it's healthy for your relationship with the Lord. And I think if we don't set boundaries and we let things um, infiltrate our walls, that can grow us closer to the worldly things versus closer to the Lord. And I think anything that's tugging at you the opposite way and pulling you away from God has to go Mm -hmm. like has to go. And that could be anything. It could be scrolling Facebook too much instead of getting in the Mm -hmm. word. Like, and I'm calling myself out here. Like, you know, the amount of times that like I'm on social media, I can be in the word and growing and learning more. But I think it's also making sure you're in the right friendships and you have the right people that are pointing you back to scripture. Like sometimes people aren't always your friend. Mm hmm. And you have to be able to decipher and discern, like, who is, who's there for your well-being. Are they praying with you? Are they walking alongside you? Are they pointing you back to scripture? Are they telling you, like, you do you, boo? And um, not what the Lord wants for mm-hmm. you, but what makes you happy. And, yes, the Lord wants us to be happy. He wants nothing more for us to be joyful and happy. But that doesn't mean that um, we get everything that we want. Yeah. You talked about last time, and we didn't touch on this, but <clears throat> praying about being in God's will. I think the hardest place to be is in God's will mm-hmm. because it's not easy. Yeah. And I think that's where you have to completely lay yourself aside and your pride aside and be in his will 100% and completely, and you don't know what that's going to throw at you. Yeah. I, I think a good example of that is, like, Mike woke up in the middle of the night one night and told me he was leaving the military after 10 years, and going to be in full-time ministry and walk to your point away from a steady income mm-hmm. and like health care and everything we've ever known to become a pastor, which we know they don't make a ton of money. And um, I think when you're in God's will, it's super scary, but like God's faithfully provided for right. our family over and over again. Yeah. And I, I can attest to that in this current <coughs> season I'm in, like things have just been up in the air with my husband's career path and, um, it's, it's still, we're still in the midst of it. Um, but, um, I will say over this last year that we've been doing our Wednesday night small group, which is just another testament of why it's important to get plugged in, um, to a church that's going to pour into you, um, specific and specifically small groups, um, because we've been doing the study and I'm just going to like, throw this study out there just because this is one that with anxiety has been so helpful for me over the, especially in the the midst of what Zach and I are going through right now with just his, what, what is our next steps? Like what Mm -hmm. for him, as far as a job, like, what are you doing God? (laughs) Um, Because, you know, we have all these plans in our head of what, you know, what we're going to be doing. And then God's like, actually (laughs) my plans look a little bit different. And, um, 
it's get out of your head, which is a study of in Philippians with Jenny Allen and she, in, in the study, which you've done. Um, but for those of you who may have not done this study, it talks about a mind map and um, like mapping out what you're really struggling with. And then like you're um, having a downward spiral thought process or an upward uh, thought process. And it's talking about like when you're having these downward thought processes, you know, you, you're spiraling out like you are you're something happens and it's like um, immediately it's with me, like my anxiety is at all, it gets to an all time high. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, like everything's falling apart. Like and, and I'm like it, I have I've been guilty of questioning like the goodness of God and and his faithfulness. And um, and it's through the study, through Philippians, um, as we started, studied each chapter, it it's it it pointed us to have a different perspective and instead to have a upward like our thoughts need to to be mirroring what mirroring Christ and um and so I have like genuinely okay God I want to implement this whenever something hard happens Mm. help me not to go immediately like you don't care or help me to trust you in all of it which Mm. is in Philippians Philippians um, 413, um, you know, I can do all things through Christ. And then in that, we also talked about, which I've said so many times on this podcast, but Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, to, um, <clears throat> to trust with all your heart and lead on into your understanding. Because I'll tell you, I don't understand what God's doing right now. Um, but he, he said, just trust, because, and I'm going to direct. And it's funny, like, not funny. It is a testament of God's faithfulness. Um with my anxiety that when all of this happened, yeah, I had, I had a cry, a good cry, but it wasn't like I immediately went to, wow. Like, I, and I, I know Satan tried. Mm-hmm. He really did. And he, he, those, those thought, but I was like, I normally I would sit in them. I would sit in those thoughts and be like, and just be like, God, like you say that you're a good God and you say that you love us, but a father, why would a father do this to his children? Right. Like, and it just seems like, and I, I even had texted you where it was just like, Sometimes it almost feels like we're being punished over and over and over again. And but the, but because we like studying through the book of Philippians um, and just trying like, God, I want to implement this thought process. I want to implement that to trust you in all the things um, and um, and to remind me that I can't do this without you. Like and that you have you are going to make a way. And even if that's not my way and like what I think it should be like conform me to your will mm. and um and it has been just it's just been awesome to see how like God has completely transformed me where and if you had, this had happened like a year ago yeah I would I'd I would still be chasing you yeah and but like God like it's and that's just God's power like mm-hmm. and how he can he can um transform your life and your thought process um and your anxious thoughts mm-hmm. and he's like nah I can, I can trump any anxiety. Yep. Um, and the one that's, that's such a, um, a relief to me that I like, cause instead of trusting myself to get through all my anxiety, like I have the Lord to lean on and it's, um, and I can rest in that. I don't have to sit in my anxiety. I can rest that the Lord knows and do I struggle? Absolutely. And the, it's a daily, if not hourly, minute by minute, like reminder, like, God, just help me trust you. Help me trust you. And but, but it's also not just me. It's in our marriage, too, like where God has just brought our marriage to, which is exciting because it's like we're just going to pray about it and we're just going to trust the Lord. And um, and I like um, seeing Zach like he, has he been discouraged? Absolutely. But like he also he's like, I know the like the Lord has been faithful. Every time we've struggled, every time we've needed something, every time, like he has said, I got you. You just got to trust. And um, I think it's this study, if you haven't done it, is, is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's really pouring into the book of Philippians and like to, to break down chapter by chapter, which is, I don't think I've ever done that before with uh, like an actual, I mean, I was a theology major, so I did a lot of studying in the Bible, but, like, actually breaking it down, like, first ever. Yeah, and it was, yes, the historical, like, aspect behind it, so. It was good. Um, I wanted to read out a verse in the Philippians that really called me out. Um, it's Philippians 2, 14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. <laughs> 
so that you may become blameless and pure children of God with fault, without fault in a rapt and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky. Mm. <laughs> I felt really, really convicted on this one when we were reading it just because I think we do a lot of things grumbling. Yeah. And um, when I say I, we, I, I mean I, um, <laughs> I do a lot of things with like, oh, yeah. Lord, like really? Like, do I got to do that? Like, that's the door you want me to walk through? But I think, you know, to to the point that I made earlier, like, wow, I can't unlock my phone. Um, the point that I made <laughs> earlier was being in God's will is the hardest place to be because it's in his will and not our will. Mm-hmm. It's not you have to die to yourself and die to what you think is best for your life. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not easy. Um, one more thing I wanted to share real quick was um, worshiping through the overwhelming. Hmm. That's hard. Um, that's something I struggle with. I think the last thing that I think about when I'm overwhelmed is to stop and worship the Lord, even in the overwhelming thing. Um, so the Apostle Paul immediately knew the feeling of being overwhelmed. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not mm. driven to despair, prosecute, prosecuted, prosecuted, can't talk, <laughs> um, but not forsaken, struck down and not destroyed. That's 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. As a follower of Christ and proclaimed of the gospel, Paul had gone through more pain and pressures mm-hmm. than many of us could ever imagine. And he did not fix his eyes on those stressors. Instead, he fixed his eyes on Jesus Christ. Mm. When he was in prison, he sang hymns to the Lord in jail. When he was in the middle of the storm of the seas, he broke bread and gave thanks to the to God on the boat. In every circumstance that is rightly overwhelming by earthly standards, Paul fought overwhelm by choosing to worship. Mm. And he focused on Christ. That's really good. It is I I've shared before worship like music is what God pulls me out of some pits sometimes. And now that I like drive a lot instead of sitting at a desk working on a computer all day, um, that's been my, my go-to is, all right, I'm going to blast some worship music. God, just like remind me of who you are. And he always gives me like the perfect song and whatever like mindset of mindset I'm in. Um, And it's important to like, to worship, not just at church on Sundays, not That's right. It's to worship every day, and you should be worshiping, um, with your family. But like finding time to do it, and I in a busy schedule when your anxiety is, you know, like oh my gosh, I just have to add one more thing to my list. You know, mm-hmm. don't make it like a oh a check, check the box. The box. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes I'm like I got to put all this way, and like you were saying, like distractions. One of the things like I recently, I, my biggest distraction was TikTok and I was like, it's got to go Yeah, because I, no other app was I scrolling. Like I was on, um, like Instagram, I get bored within like five minutes Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like, I'm, and, um, but TikTok, it's always like, it's just entertaining and, um, I deleted it and then I re-downloaded it and Katie called me out and was like, you re-downloaded TikTok. And I was like, I did. She was like, you were supposed to get rid of it. Yeah. And well, it's amazing. I literally told Zach, I was like, it's amazing how much time I have now. It's freeing. Yeah. And I didn't realize like how much time I was spending. And no wonder I was so anxious because I'm filling my head with all these things that like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. This person's doing this and this and this. And I'm not, I'm like just, you know. And But you're also training your brain chemistry to not be able to focus on mm-hmm. things because of the, the time. Like I did a... I, I read a study about how like TikTok is destroying our brains. Like we used to have like attention spans of, I don't know, like a squirrel that's really like five minutes. Right. And like the more that we're watching the short term video like this and like the, what we're training our brains to be like, we're training it to now, like we can't, we can't absorb things anymore. And I like that hit me hard too. Yeah. And it's, um, sometimes when anxiety is high, you got to self-reflect and be like, what is distracting me from spending time with the Lord? Mm. Because I know if I'm not nurturing a relationship with the Lord, as far as like worship, reading my Bible and praying, um, I, my anxiety is like through the roof. Yeah. And I've noticed that when I'm making the, the time, like, and, but not just like, like I said, to check a box, like actually like, God, I want to, I want to, I want to learn from you. I want to glean something out of your word. Like show me, um, I, 
it, you're, I don't know. It just really has been helping my anxiety and also just stop trying to, to hold all the, the reins to everything. Yeah. Like you got to let the reins go and let God lead you. Um, and sometimes it's giving up stuff that may not necessarily be a bad thing in your life, but it's not what's God's best for your life. It's not edifying to the Lord and it's not helping your relationship with the Lord. It's not growing you stronger. It's unfortunately distracting you. And I think with the busyness of our lives that we live and I'm sure that we have listeners out there that are just as busy, like one more thing that we can eliminate that we can grow Mm -hmm. closer to the Lord, I think is a win. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I'd encourage you today if you're struggling with anxiety or if you're struggling with busy busyness, think, think hard and maybe pray about the one thing that maybe you need to let go of and replace that with time with the Lord or time worshiping or time, um, in your Bible, um, or just praying. I think, um, it starts with just one thing and like recognizing that this one thing I can take out of my life that maybe isn't edifying to the Lord or maybe it's just distraction. Maybe it's not mm-hmm. even, it's bad to your point. It's probably a good thing, but that, that time can be replaced with time with the Lord. Yeah, I agree. So we hope that this, um, Short session. Short, not short session. Yeah. Um, encourages you and just gives you a deeper understanding that Megan and I are just two broken women that are literally following what the Lord has for them and in his will. And this podcast is completely his. And we pray every single day that it, it reaches one woman um, and that you can just get a little peep inside that um, although it looks like we have it all together, we don't. And... Um, we're here if you want to reach out and you have any prayer requests. We'd love to pray alongside you. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for joining y'all. Um, again, if you haven't already subscribed to our social medias, please do that. Um, wherever you get podcasts, if you could give us um, likes, that would be great. Maybe leave us a nice review. If you have a bad review, maybe don't <coughs> leave it. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Hope you have a blessed day. It's a brand new day.